Let's give it up for Jesus. Before you sit down, I want to ask you, who are you? Who are you? Do you know what that means? That means that you're victorious in anything because he who is in you is greater than he that's in the world. Amen? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, the name that the Father gave you because he gave you his name. You're all powerful. You're almighty. You're all glorious. You're clothed in splendor. That, Lord, there's nothing that can stand against your word. There's nothing that doesn't bow to your word, God. And, Lord God, we right now, we pray for all of those friends and family members who are in the battle against COVID right now, God. We claim the name of Jesus over them, God. We claim healing over them, God. We claim your power over them, God. That this disease, that this affliction, God, is not greater than you. And, God, we pray. God, we pray for those broken hearts this morning. For those families who won't have a son coming back from Afghanistan, God. God, we, we feel their pain, God. God, our hearts hurt with them. We ask, God, that you would shower your grace upon them. Grace upon grace upon grace, God. We ask you, God, that you would be that balm in Gilead that heals their hearts, God. Lord God, that you would be their strength in those hours of darkness, that you would be their strength in those weakest moments, and that somehow, some way, God, that in the darkness that the light would shine through so that they can know Jesus. God, help our country to wake up. God, help your church to wake up, God. So that the powerful love of Jesus will be that healing that happens. Would it be that release that gives comfort, God? Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd stir your church this morning, God. Lord, that you'd open our eyes this morning, God. That we realize that we are children of God and that we walk in the power of the King, God. We don't walk as weak, feeble people. We don't walk with a cloak of fear, but we walk with power and love and of a sound mind. And there's nothing that can stand against you, oh God, when we stand with you and in you and through you. So we declare this morning that we have a birthright and we are your children. And the church said hallelujah together. Amen and amen. Yeah, y'all can clap. Listen, I know that some of you sort of have lost your touch while I've been gone, okay? You forgot how to clap. You forgot how to amen. You you sort of sort of cautious with it, uh, and and I just want you to know that uh, I gotta be careful this morning because I haven't preached in three months. It feels like it may be three months. But can I tell you? Thank you for praying for me. <laughs> thank you for being my family not just somebody that comes here that means a lot to me because you know sometimes I stand up here and sometimes it feels like you stand by yourself but now I know that I don't stand by myself I stand with an army of God's people amen Amen. so I intentionally when I wrote my notes I left a page and a half almost two pages off because when I haven't preached in a while I have a tendency to tell you everything that's on my heart, but there's too much on my heart right now. So uh, we're going to spread it out a little bit. Uh, so I want to I start this morning, though, by just sort of asking you a question. Now, some of you won't be able to answer this because you're not in this phase of life, but how many of you in the room or online, if you, if you have grandkids, just raise your hand. Okay. That's a lot of people that have grandkids. Now, if you have a grandkid on the way, raise your hand. All right, woo. 
So you're about to know what everybody else that raised their hand has experienced. If you don't have grandkids, that's okay. Uh, but, you know, I, I want you to know that when my wife and I have four kids, and our youngest is, uh, he just turned 21, and you love your kids, there's something different about grandkids. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I, it's indescribable, really. Um, because you, you, you know, you, when we had uh, kids and we'd go visit our parents, you would come in the door and they'd run right past you to grab the grandkid. It's like you, you didn't exist anymore, right? You were just the producer of the thing that, you know, they really wanted to see, and that was the grandkids. And so, you know, you sort of get used to that. But what I did is I caught myself doing the same thing, <laughs> running right past my kids to get to my grandkids. You know, I just want you to know, I'm not really ashamed of it, though. <laughs> That's the bad part, you know. It's like you feel like you feel, but you're not ashamed of it. And, and what I've noticed about my grandkids, I, and I, I want you to see my grandkids, because uh, if you've got grandkids, you have a portfolio of them. <laughs> Here's what I've noticed about grandkids. They get whatever they want. I'm, if you listen, we go to the store and we get uh, gas and or fuel, and we we um, um, go in to get a coffee or something. Then my grandchild goes straight to the ice cream box, and it's not oh you can't have ice cream; it's too early. It doesn't matter if it's breakfast; it's it, it's it's just a it's got all the food groups in it, right? And so my, one of my granddaughters, she loves the, the Spongebob ice cream. And every time we go, she wants to know if we're going to the coffee store. <laughs> and when they ask for something, you're in the store. If they want a toy, guess what you get? Two toys, right? And while you're out going around, you're thinking about, what can I take back to my grandkids? I mean, it's like a consuming thing, isn't it? It's like crazy. It's like overtaking you. And some of you, listen, you're like way over the top. I feel like we're over the top. Some of you, some of you are way over the top. Uh, you're bringing stuff home that doesn't even fit in your car that you got to go back and get. <laughs> but there's something about that love that does, it gives you joy inside to give, doesn't it? I mean, it just gives you joy inside to, to, to pass on something that says, I, I love you so much, I just, I just can't describe it. But I want to give you this to show you. Isn't it amazing? Now I know the rest of you are thinking, I wish my kids would hurry up so I could get some grandkids. And some of you are saying, no, they're not even that phase of life. You just, let's enjoy no grandkids for a while. But here's the thing is, <clears throat> when I get around my grandkids, just like I'm sure you guys are, your heart is so full that it is an expression of your heart to want to give. I mean, it's hard to imagine that you can love something or somebody so much that you just want to give as an expression. But you know, I also noticed that there are other people you get around that you don't have that same expression, do you? <clears throat> and there are some people you get around and you're like, ah, oh, they're gonna ask for something again. Or you start sort of avoid them, you see them, you know, you see them. Uh, it's like that, that person that's at the gas pump and he's going from pump to pump trying to get stuff from people and you're trying to act like you're not watching, you know, you're looking at your phone, you're looking at the gas pump and you're looking in the sky, you know, I mean, you're just trying to avoid that or that person on the side of the road that you've seen and seen and seen and, and you, you, God's just spirit has revealed to you that they're not really authentic and so you, instead of looking at them, you turn the other way, you know, because there's just some people that, your heart's not in it and when your heart's not in it you don't want to give do you now I give you those examples because I really believe you don't give to everybody I really believe that God's spirit will lead you to who you need to give to because he knows who's, he knows who's real and in need and he knows who's not in need he knows who's just if you will just scamming and so you got to listen to the spirit 
But there's some people that, that you, just, you just sort of avoid. And it, listen, it might even be a family member, right? But the question is, what does it feel like when you give to God? This is not a question to make you feel guilty. This is a question that's going to take us somewhere. God wants to release something in us this morning. You see, when, when it comes to our relationship with God, do you give because your heart is so full, or do you give because you feel like somebody's trying to take it away from you you feel guilty? Do you, do you sort of avoid the topic do you avoid it and not want to bring it up because there's something there that makes you feel like you want to just turn the other way? You see, as we talk about our playlist and what we value, this is the last value that Crossroads Church has. And we value this idea of giving with a joyful heart. And, and here's what I noticed as I was thinking about this topic. I was thinking about my grandkids, and I'm like, all right, do I give with God the same, with the same joy that I give to my grandkids? Because, you see, when I give to them, I don't think that it's a loss. I don't think I'm letting going, go of something. I feel like that, you know what, I, I want to do it, and there's nothing coerced there. And so here's the thing is, what we see in Scripture and what we see that God wants us to understand is that love causes us to want to give. Y'all remember probably the most common verse in the Bible that almost everybody knows, even a lot of unbelievers know, in John 3, 16. It says this, for God so what? Love. Let's say it louder, church. God did what? Love. The world that he did what? Gave. So love gave. Love motivated. Love drives this whole idea of giving. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so what God wants us to understand is, is that giving is a reflection of who God is. Giving in us as his believers is a reflection of him in us. And so when we give, we are being most like God because God gave. And so when we get to this place in our life where we come to this tension of why don't we give, and I'm not just talking about giving in church, I'm talking about giving wherever you are in the world and whatever God is prompting you to do. Because here's the thing, when you and I understand that love has to be connected to giving, then we begin to understand the motivation behind God's heart because we love, we give, because we love, we give, and it works with our grandkids, it works in every area of our life, and so when we are overcome by love, then we want to give, and that's why God gave his son Jesus on the cross because he loves you. You understand that? He loves you with all your imperfections. He loves you with all your mistakes. He loves you with all your shortcomings. He loves you with your past history. He loves you with your infidelity. He loves you with your addictions. He loves you with your cursing. He loves you with every little defect that you have in your life. God looks at you and he says, I'm sending my son Jesus because in spite of you, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. And that is the kind of love that the whole world is looking for. They are looking for that kind of love. So when it comes to us in our giving, it tells us this about God. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And we read that verse, and it almost sounds like a negative there because we misunderstand what God is trying to get us to see is the reason God loves a person who gives cheerfully, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love everybody else. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you because you don't give. God loves you in spite of you. All right? He loves you in spite of your actions. Jesus died on the cross when you were at your worst and I was at my worst, okay? We got to understand that. But what God wants us to grasp here is 
that he loves a cheerful giver because when we give that way, we reflect the image of God in us. We reflect the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit didn't give to us grudgingly. He was a freely releasing what God wanted to do when Jesus came and he still wants to freely release that. And so if you and I are image bearers of the Lord Jesus Christ, then our image bearing goes all the way to how we give. So that's what God wants us to understand. Is it listen, be cheerful in your giving. What does cheerful mean? It means joyous, merry, full of joy. And so when we give, whatever it is, it's almost like a, a praise session. Woo, I get to give, I get to give. Here you go, God. But here's the reality. What makes us have that joy is that the gift is not to the person. The gift is given to God. How could I not give with joy when my Savior gave his life for me? He didn't say, oh, man, I got to die for Greg. Oh, man, I got to die for Susie. Oh, man, I, he didn't say that. He said, I'm going to die for that little druggy because I love him and then he says I get great joy when you give back to me the same way I gave to you that's as simple as that so God is trying to release us you see it's not something you conjure up it's something that God produces in us but let's, let's be transparent for just a moment here First, I'll be transparent. I was reluctant to come back in my first message be on giving. It's like I got set up, right? We was like, save this last one. And, but here's the thing is, I felt the Holy Spirit say, Greg, you need to come back regardless of what the message is because the message is my word. Amen? Amen? It's, yeah. We don't get to take an exacto knife and take some of it out, even though we like to sometimes. But let's just be honest about the topic. It makes us uncomfortable sometimes. But what God is trying to do here is remove the uncomfortableness because there's a misunderstanding about giving. There's a misunderstanding about our mindset, whether it's giving an offering, whether it's giving a tithe, whether it's giving out there in the community, or whether it's giving to a mission organization, whether it's giving to support a kid or sponsor a kid. What, no matter what the giving is, let's, let's be transparent about what holds us back sometimes. Because, listen, God wants you to have a breakthrough this morning. Why? Because when you have a breakthrough in this area, I'm going to tell you something, you'll begin to have a breakthrough in other areas. And so he says, I want you to give cheerfully, which is the opposite of being reluctant about it so why do we struggle to give because many of us give out of guilt you see we quit passing the offering plate during COVID because we didn't want everybody passing their germs and here's the thing the offering plate causes guilt sometimes you see somebody else put some in you go, oh man that's my neighbor sitting right beside me He's going to think I'm a heathen if I don't, or she. And so you start, you know, you start squirming, and you're like, uh, I get it. It's real. Some of us, listen, some of us give or don't give because we're afraid. Let's just be real. You're afraid that if you give, you're not going to have enough. You know what your checkbook looks like? You know what your banking account balance is. You may not even know what a checkbook is, but you know what your bank card balance is. And you're thinking, if I give, I won't have enough. So, so you don't give because you're afraid you won't have enough. I get that. That's real. Everybody goes through that. And you know, other people don't give because you feel manipulated. You feel like, you know what, all they want is my money. They want my money so that they can just do whatever they want to do. No matter what your reasons are, they're your reasons and they're real. But here's the thing is, are you going to let your reasons hold you back from what God's best is for you? 
Are you going to let those things in your life dominate you and control you? Because here's, there's something you've got to understand that I'm going to, I'm going to reveal to you and God's going to reveal through his word. I want to give you the rest of the verse. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves the person who gives cheerfully. That was the part we started with. And so here's what God said. He says, you have to decide in your what? Your heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. Out of the heart determines the direction of life. And so he's saying, listen, you've got to give from your heart. It's not something that you're just thinking about. It's something you're connecting with. Where does love come from? The heart. And so God is wanting us to understand something that in order to be a giver, a generous giver to any area of life, not just the church, then your heart has to be connected with it. That's why it is so easy for you and I to give when we discover a heart that is in love and in passionate love for God. Because you don't have a problem giving the things that you love. I don't have a problem. I will give and give and give to my grandkids and I won't even look at my checking account or my bank balance to determine whether I should give. I will give in my poverty as well as my riches. I will give because money is not the object. They are the object. You understand what I'm saying here? You see, when I love what I have more than the one I want to give to, I won't give what I have. And that's the, the tension in our lives is God is saying, listen, that money is not going to love you back, but I will. So don't love what you have more than the one that died on the cross to give you what you have. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't it crazy that, that this world could so mess us up in our thinking that we, we began to fear letting go of something that we're not taking with us? I mean, that we began to fear that, that, that God, that I'm not going to have enough, that we begin to walk in this, this place of fear? When what God wants us to understand is that, listen, if you just learn to love me more deeply, then this is not an issue in your life anymore. Because I'll have your heart, that won't. I'll have your heart, and you'll be able to let go of what's holding on to you and controlling you. You see, so many of us don't understand this. We're so worried about what we have. We're so worried about money. But here's the thing is, we worry because we fear. Fear brings about worry. And so perfect love cast out what? It does, right. And so, who gives us perfect love? God does. His perfect love will cast out any fear in my life. And so, if I'm walking in fear in any area of my life, not just this whole idea, in any area of my life, then all I need to do is pull closer to the one who is perfect in his love, and I will have this, this overcoming, overwhelming sensation in my life where God diminishes the fear because I'm in the presence of the provider. If I could help you to understand something this morning that would release you from your worry about your financial life. Do you think that would be freeing to you? If you never had to worry about money again, wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't that just be like, not, don't have to worry about retirement, don't have to worry about what you have, don't have to worry about paying your bills, don't have, you, if, if you could understand something about what God wants to do in our lives, then it would change the way you think. But in order to get there, you've got to understand there's a pathway, there's a process. And that process is, is sort of found in Acts chapter 20, verses uh, 35b. It says this, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more what? Blessed to do what? Than to do what? Now, listen, can, can, we, can we show a hand? How many of you like to receive? Come on. Come on, man. 
Yeah, we all like to receive. I like to receive. I do not like to receive gift cards, though. Do not waste your time buying a gift card when you just hand me the cash. <laughs> you, listen, a gift card does not mean you thought about me. A gift card just simply means that you are ashamed to give cash because you didn't think about me. But if you ever give me cash, I feel like you thought about me, all right, because you didn't give me a gift card. Because, you know, you always get a gift card somewhere you don't like to go, right? I mean, it's like Applebee's. Is that place still around? You know, it's like, why, why, why do I get a gift card? So just now when you give gift cards, just realize that everybody else knows why you're giving them a gift card. I'm not the only one that thinks this way. A lot of people, oh, I got another gift card. Let's see. Let me go to my Rolodex and file this next gift card. Gift cards are a great gift just to give away if you get them, though, right? Hey, here's a gift card. I don't even know. I don't eat at this place. But what's it? What's, there's a, uh, uh, what's it called? Chipotle. 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 I'm like, I got to put too much cilantro and everything. I don't even like to eat there. And I get a gift card. What am I going to do with this? It's because you don't know me. But we still try, don't we? But here's what God wants us to understand. Is that in our giving, even though we like to receive, outgive what you receive. So you'll be blessed. What does it mean blessed? Blessed is a word that actually just means happy, joyful. So don't miss out on the joy. You see, the, Satan is robbing us of something that God wants to give us. There's joy in giving. There's joy in releasing. As a matter of fact, here's, here's what God, he's so convinced that this is a truth that we need to live by because it'll change our lives. It'll change the world around us. He says in verse 8, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and what? How much left over? Plenty left over to share with others. Now, when you got company coming over, are you one of those people that just tries to say, you know what, we just want to cook the exact amount? Or are you like one of those people that cooks way too much? Yeah, because you want plenty left over. You don't want them leaving. Huh? God's saying he is not one of those skimp by kind of gods. He is one of those gods that there's going to be plenty leftovers for you. But here's the thing. It doesn't make sense to us. Now, let me ask you something. I got my money box here. And you know what? What if you had a money box? You might have one. I'm not telling you to tell your wife or to tell your husband if you have a money box and they don't know about it, okay? <laughs> this is not confession time. This is let's learn something time. But wouldn't it be like the coolest thing if you had a money box in your house that every time you spent money you go back to the money box and there's more and you spend more and you go back to the money box and there's more wouldn't that be like wouldn't, wouldn't you want where do you order that box from on Amazon if you would want one of those boxes in your house. Some of you think you have one of those boxes. It's called your parents, right? <laughs> but if you knew that the money box never ran out, do you think you would be more generous? Of course. I got the main supply. If I give it all away, I just go back for more. I mean, can you imagine how generous we would be? We'd be like, instead of high-fiving each other, we'd be low-fiving with a $5 bill. He'd go, go, go buy yourself a candy bar, right? That's about all you can buy with a $5 bill these days anyway, right? 
We would be generous. You see somebody on the side of the road, hey, hey here's some money. Go get something. Get some food. Get, go, go, go get your hotel for now. Whatever, you know. And, and you begin to you find this, this, thing, this thing going on in your life. And what happens is the more you give, the more you want to give. And the more you, you begin to get in that mindset, you, you begin to get joy in giving. You're like, man, I like blessing people. And I don't have any fear because I got a money box. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need. Everything you need. Everything is everything, right? And... I love a God who's a God of ands, right? And what, church? Come on, claim your promise. Plenty left over to do what with? Give what's in the money box so that God can give you more. Say, isn't that prosperity? No. That's promise-based giving. God, listen, listen to what God just gave you and I. He gave us a promise. We build our lives on the promises of God. They are yes and amen. That means so be it. They'll always be. And so I, this promise that God gives me is that when I am a generous giver, then God will give back and he'll give me with plenty left over that I won't be in need. That's what God is saying. But here's the thing is, if you get to that place, you've got to unlock the promise. You see, the promise is not activated until you and I begin to release what's in the box. You see, if you want to just build the box up, you'll never experience the promise. Why? Because the box will never be full until the box begins to diminish and God sees your heart and he says, you know what? That person has my heart. How do I know he has my heart? Because he has my spirit. And how do I know he has my spirit? Because the fruit of the spirit is first of all, what? Love. What's the second fruit? Joy. When you love God, you won't mind giving. And when you don't mind giving, you'll find joy in the very thing that gave God joy that he gave. Can you believe that? That God wants to do this in your life, in my life? That God wants me to activate this promise so I don't walk around in fear anymore? You see, when you and I get to this place where God says to give and we're afraid we won't have enough, then we've allowed the spirit of this world to control our minds because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power loving of a sound mind. And the way that you break through is not saying, God, take it away from me. The way that you break through is you plant a seed in the direction that you want to go. How does that work? God, I'm going to be honest with you. I am afraid that I won't have enough. But I'm going to plant a seed of faith because I want to believe you. And so you take some of what you have in the box and you plant it in a place so that God can see your faith. And God will allow your faith to grow so that you don't trust yourself in the system of this world. You begin to trust God who controls the box. Now, why is this so important? It's so important because it's simple to break through. It's so important because God blesses you when you get here. But it's so important because it changes the world around us. But see, I don't believe that the church is becoming ineffective because people don't want it to be effective. I believe that the church is becoming ineffective because God's people have bought into the system of the world rather than the system that God created. I believe that God's people are going to be the ones that crush the church unless we change because of our greed and our pursuit of the very things that we want that have clouded our hearts from the very thing that God designed us for. And so when we hold on, we miss it. And here's what God has shown me also. 
in my time of healing is that many people in this world need to be healed and many of you need to be healed. But here's the thing is, is that you don't know how to ask for healing so that you can be healed because you don't even have enough faith to believe that God can provide for you financially. And so how can I believe that God can heal me if I don't even believe God can provide for me if I give to him? How can I believe that church? How can I claim the promise of God at a deeper level when I can't even claim the promise of God in the shallow waters? And so what we do is we get to that place where we need healing, but we don't know how to ask for it because we don't even believe in the God at the basic level. How can we believe in God at the supernatural level? And God is saying, I've got all these provisions. I've got all these promises. I've got this promise in Psalm 103 that says, I heal you from all of your diseases. How many? All of them. He tells us by his stripes we're healed. But here's the thing is, you don't know how to grab a hold of the promise. Because you're still afraid to let go of the provision. So that you can see a greater provision. See, God gave you that provision to grow your faith, not to stifle it. God gave you that possession to release it so he could grow your faith. And here's what God is showing me. If you were going to have the faith to overcome in this world, if you're going to have the faith to stand against COVID, if you're going to have the faith to walk out in this world and not be afraid of all that's out there, afraid that somebody's going to breathe on you, afraid that somebody's going to touch on you, you, we're walking in fear, but God is trying to get us to understand that I am greater than anything that's in this world. And if you get it, I can cure it. But if you can't trust me with the small, how in the world will you ever trust me with the big? You see, I really believe that for many of us, our pathway to healing in our life is to take a step of faith in our giving. I really believe our pathway to trusting God with our family is to take a step in giving. And what God does is he begins to grow our faith. And when your faith grows, your fear diminishes. And so this lesson, this giving is so much more. But the question is, how do I start? The same way you start anything with God is that you ask you remember when Peter and, and his buddies were in the boat and it was stormy and, and all of a sudden Jesus comes walking on the water? They were afraid to start with, right? Normal reaction. Very uncommon for people to walk on water. And when they all recognized who it was, one person stood out. Jesus, if it's you... Ask me to come to you. You see, sometimes when it comes to walking on water and stepping out of our boat of security, all we simply have to do is say, Jesus, ask me to come. Jesus, I'm asking you to let me get out of the boat in this area of my life. Jesus, would you give me the faith? Jesus, would you give me this? Give me the seed, God, to plant so that my faith can grow. Just ask God. Tell God, God, I am uncomfortable. God, I am walking in fear. God, I am letting money control me. But today, God, I am asking you for a breakthrough. Just ask him. And I promise you, he's going to do this just like he did Peter. <laughs> Come on. Put your seed out and come to me. God is leading you to this place where you fully begin to understand his love. You see, you can't give if you don't love God. You can't give if you haven't experienced his love. And so when we're talking about this message... If, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it doesn't make sense to you. And listen, if it doesn't make sense to you, you don't have to stay there. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I need 
you to save me. Jesus, I need you to change my life. Jesus, I need you to deliver me. Jesus, I need. And so here's what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to experience his love before he asks anything of you. He wants you and I to come to this relationship with him so that we can understand that God so loved the world that he gave his son to die on the cross for you. Write your name on the cross. It's you that he died for. It's your sins. It's your shortcomings. It's all that's holding you back. And so you don't have to sit here and act like you're something that you're not. God wants you to experience the full power that he has for you. But it starts with Jesus. You know why your addiction still controls you? Because Jesus isn't controlling you. You know why money holds us? Because God's not been invited to that area of our life. You know why we walk in fear? Because we're not walking with God. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. And so this morning I'm asking you, can you take a step? For some of us, this step is saying, listen, I've got, to, I've got to reach into the box this morning, and I've got to say, all right, God, I'm planting a seed, a seed of faith, and this is my starting point. For others of us, your seed is, God, I just need a Savior. I need you to save me because I really believe you want to do greater things in my life than what I'm experiencing. God, this relationship, this, this thing that's controlling me. So I want to ask you right now just to bow your heads for just a moment. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe, church, this is for all of us, do you believe that God, that Jesus is able to provide for you? If you do, just raise your hand. All right, put them down, please. Second question, do you believe that Jesus loves you so much that he died on the cross for you. Do you believe that? Just raise your hand. Amen. Put your hands down. Do you believe that God wants you to experience in your life this morning greater things than you're currently experiencing through his power? If you believe that, raise your hand. All right, put them down. For everybody that raised their hands, would you let that seed of faith that God has given you, would you let that little seed begin to grow? Through starting this morning as you walk out the door, you're going to plant your seed offering in that offering box. For others of you, you're going to allow that seed that's already been planted, that you've been given, you're going to allow it to grow in the ability so that you can begin to receive the full promises of God, the promise of healing, the promise of release, the promise of this, this supernatural life where you're full of joy. So right now, I want to pray over you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, God. We this morning declare that you are our God. We declare that you love us with an everlasting love. We declare that Jesus died on the cross and that he so loved us that he gave his very life for us. And God, this morning, we declare that we're gonna be a giving church, God. We're gonna be a church that doesn't hold back. We're gonna be a church that lets go so that we can experience the full provision of God, Lord. We wanna see supernatural things in our life, God. We wanna see healing in our life. We want to see release in our life. We want to see binding in our life, God. We want to see your power come to full fruition, God. And we want to see it manifested this morning, God, through salvation, through healing, through release, through redemption, through righteousness, through a lifestyle that is totally different, God. And so right now, God, our mindset and our mind is leading into this place where we say, God, we surrender that area of our life, God. We surrender what's in the box. We surrender what's in the bank, God. We surrender that fear, God. We surrender that worry, God. We surrender that disease, God. Because, God, we know that you are our healer. You're our sustainer. And we worship you this morning, God, because you are worthy of our praise.
So church, let's stand to our feet. As we play this next song, this is your time of surrender. If you've been walking in a lifestyle where you're holding back on God, then I invite you down to this altar and say, God, this morning I'm releasing it to you. If you've been walking in that lifestyle where you don't believe God can heal you, but this morning God's gonna heal you. Will you walk down this aisle and say, God, I believe you to heal me. I believe you to release me. This is your opportunity for God to do something supernatural in your life. So don't stay in your seat. Move so the Holy Spirit can awaken you, church. Awaken all of us so we can see See the glory of God working this morning. So let's respond as God leads you.